Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Robots of Dawn by Isaac Asimov. So I believe this is book number three in his robot series, although you can read them as standalones. It's basically like a cross between a science fiction novel and a mystery novel. I'm going to go ahead and read the blurb from the back here to you guys, and then I'll go through, check out my tabs, and give you my overall rating at the end. So, on the planet of Dawn, robots and humans coexist peacefully until a humaniform robot... One of the most sophisticated manifestations of artificial intelligence ever created is murdered. Only one man on the planet Aurora had the means, the motive and the opportunity to commit the crime. He hires interplanetary detective Elijah Bailey to prove that he did not do it. Armed only with his own instincts, his sometimes quirky logic and the immutable three laws of robotics, Bailey sets out to solve the case. So what I think is actually cool and again armed with the three laws of robotics Asimov does this in his robots novels. He has these three laws of robotics that are hugely influential in sci-fi and basically they lay out how a robot can function and then he experiments with how they could be broken. So uh, we'll see a lot of examples of that. So even here, uh, there was a trifling vibration in his hands. Bailey noticed that and it was quite obvious that it meant a certain amount of conflict in the robot's positronic pathways. They had to obey human beings, but it was quite common for two human beings to want two different types of obedience. I always find it interesting to see how many um, people Asimov says is li are living on the Earth at the, t at the time. So in this one, it was 8 billion, which isn't far off, if not actually where we are now. I think it was 7 billion when I was at school. This was written in 1985, when it would have been about 5 or 6 billion. So um, there's kind of a thing here where a robot's being hugged and um, he can't like repel the hug. Uh, the insurmountable first law of robotic states, a robot may not injure a human being and to repel a friendly gesture would do injury. And we get some interesting stuff here on like the semantics of words and how they apply to robots. He said slowly, a human being who is functioning is alive. If that life is violently ended by the deliberate action of another human being, we call that murder or homicide. Murder is, somehow, the stronger word. To be witness suddenly to an attempted violent end to the life of a human being, one would shout murder. It is not at all likely that one would shout homicide. It is the most formal word, the less emotional word. And then uh, the robot R. R. Daniel said, I do not understand the distinction you are making, partner Elijah. Since murder and homicide are both used to represent the violent ending of the life of a human being, the two words must be interchangeable. Where then is the distinction? Of the two words, one screamed out will more effectively chill the blood of a human being than the other will, Daniel. Why is that? Connotations and associations, the subtle effect not of dictionary meaning, but of years of usage, the nature of the sentences and conditions and events in which one has experienced the use of one word as compared with that of the other. Just thought that was interesting. The main character here, he says, um, he was not sufficiently knowledgeable about Earth's geography. What he really knew of Earth were its underground cities, its caves of steel. And there's an Asimov novel called Caves of Steel, which I've read, and it was pretty good. Uh, we get here, uh, he thought uncomfortably, a robot corpse is much more human than a human corpse. And there was a bit here, um, this this little interchange here, which, which reminds me of the end of um, Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials trilogy, funnily enough. If you've read that enough times, I guess, because it's kind of a specific reference. But let me know if you've read that and you can relate that back to this, because I'd be interested. Gladia said, I forgot to tell you last night that after Jander is torched, he will, of course, be recycled for use in the robot factories again. It will be amusing, I suppose, to know that each time I see a newly formed robot, I can take time to realise that many of Janda's atoms form part of him. Bailey said, We ourselves, when we die, are recycled. And who knows what atoms of whom are in you and me right now, or in whom ours will someday be. I also saw this thing the other day, which kind of made me sad in a way, where it was just talking about how quickly cells are replaced in the body. And it's like, within 32 days or something of you seeing them, they're technically not the same skin cells and all this stuff, so they're technically different people. And it's just kind of sad if you miss someone, you know? And this was kind of funny because uh, Bailey's not used to rain, so it says here, Bailey frowned. He had been caught in the rain once, once, during his experimental work in the field outside on Earth. It was like standing under a cold shower with his clothes on. There had been sheer panic for a moment when he realised that there was no way in which he could reach for any controls that would turn it off. The water would come down forever. Then everyone was running and he ran with them, making for the dryness and controllability of the city. And uh, somebody gets accused of being jealous and uh, on this planet Aurora, it's just like not done. And uh, this guy says, uh, it is a word we encounter only in historical romances. And even then the word is usually spelled with a J followed by a dash. 
I don't know. I always find it entertaining when authors do that. They don't really do it these days. It's quite an old school thing to do, to filter out a word, you know? This bit amused me, this little bit of dialogue. He said, There was an ancient general whose name I have forgotten, who, mindful of the exigencies of sudden absorption in military affairs, once said, Never turn down a chance to piss. Words to live by. And we get this, there's a little, not, there's a little twist as well where basically a robot has been underestimated by a human because as humans we look at them and we just assume the ones that look more humanoid and more realistic are more advanced and so there was a robot that didn't look very humanoid but was super technologically advanced. I just thought it was well done. All in all there's plenty of food for thought here especially about like philosophy and ethics and the rules that govern AI and stuff. Uh, Asimov's a super well-known science fiction writer. As I said, you can read this series as standalones or through in the series. I really enjoyed it. I gave it like a 3.75 out of 5 and probably would recommend, especially if you're into sci-fi and or detective stories. So there we have it. That's what I made of The Robots of Dawn by Isaac Asimov. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.